Hey, this is Ralph. I want to continue looking at fixed versus flexible web page layouts. So I've got my little mock up here, and this is a fixed layout at the moment. But now I'd like to make it a little bit more flexible. So what I'm going to do here is a couple things. I'm going to head back over to my styles, and let me kind of really point out what I've got going. My overall container is set to 960 pixels, and that is limiting the range of my elements. And just so you can visualize this real quick, Quick, let me put in two picks, um, solid black border, so that you can see how this looks. And that's not very thick at all, so let me change it over to like nine pixels thick so it really stands out to you. There we go. So the black bordered box is my container, and it's got a set width of 960 pixels. Now, if I want this to be a flexible web page layout, pretty easy to do. All I need to do is instead of using a fixed width, I would put in a percentage. Now you might say, well, okay, I want it to be 100% wide. That's a dollar sign. I want it to be 100% wide. Let's see what happens. If I refresh, there we go. It's 100%, but look at this annoying little horizontal scroll that I've got. Oh, we don't want that horizontal scroll. That'd be terrible. And that's going to happen at any resolution. Even if I size down to 1024, I still have that horizontal that annoying horizontal scroll. By the way, this reminds me a lot of the mistake that Amazon.com made. Amazon has a annoying horizontal scroll at a 1024 resolution. So I bet someone screwed up with their percentages. You don't want to do 100% because the border takes up width, that black border that I just put in. But even if I had a zero border, I still might have a little problem. Ooh, actually it worked out okay. I don't have a horizontal scroll. I wouldn't have been shocked if there was one though, because even at 100%, that's kind of risky because sometimes the browse, the width of the space gets factored in for like the browser bars. Another thing that's helping me out, by the way, is I've got a reset rule. See this? I've set all my default margins and padding and borders to zero to start with, so a reset rule's given me a little bit of an extra edge there. All right, I do want to put that border back though so you can see things, but clearly 100% is not the way to go, so I'm going to change it to 90%. 90% container, there we go. So at 1024, page looks good. At a 1280 resolution, which is what my recording size is, things are still looking good, a little bit of space. And if I stretch this all the way out to like a 1600 resolution, you can't see the right edge there, but still not much of a space, but everything's getting stretched out. Everything except my sidebar. Notice that what is stretching is the header, the main content, and the footer. Those are the expanding stretchy parts. My sidebar is staying fixed. That's because on my editor, my sidebar has a fixed width of 200 pixels, and I don't want you to really change that. Flexible web page layouts are great, not better, just great, um, but you hardly ever want a sidebar to be flexible, okay? You generally want it to be a fixed width um, because that might contain some uh, vertically oriented navigation menu ads or whatnot, you know? So you don't want your sidebar stretching. That would just get too annoying. You don't really need to see that. I just want my editor. Where's my editor? There it is. So you might say, oh, well, I'm going to do my sidebar at 20% and then my my main section, let's see. This is going to be, I know, this is going to look weird. 20% and then for header and content and footer I didn't even have a width in there let me pop one in though 80% by the way what I'm doing right now is not a good thing to do so don't worry too much about copying me and then refresh oh I, I must have screwed up on my number somewhere oh my footer Man. gotta stop alt tabbing there we go so um, my footer needs a little Margin left, 20%. I'm not going to explain why. It's another video. And I still screwed it up. So don't worry about that anyway. But what I want to focus on here is that ah, my sidebar is going to get smaller and smaller. And that's not going to be good for whatever content that I have in there. So all that stuff I just did is not really helpful at all. So here's what we got to do. Let me just control Z to undo a bunch of this stuff. I'm going to put my main, get get the width out of all those sections, put my sidebar back to a fixed height, but I'll keep the container at a, at a resolution that's reasonable, okay? So I'll keep that container. 
refresh, and now I've got a flexible web page layout that's quite manageable. Now you might start to say, all right, well that's pretty good. I kind of like that. I like that flexible web page layout. But if it goes too small, it's looking silly. If it goes too big, it's looking silly. So what you can do is you can do a flexible web page layout, but you can put in some constraints. Check this out. In addition to my width of 90% for my container, I could also put a min width of, let's say, 800 pixels and a max width of 1250 pixels. So now it's going to be flexible, but there's going to be a minimum and a maximum limitation. So if I go back here, all right, got my good flexible web page layout, but if it starts to go smaller than 800, you're going to ultimately get to, and did I hit not hit refresh? There we go, I didn't hit refresh. So let me go back out here. So I've got flexible, but when I start to size this down, at a certain point, if my browser window goes smaller than 800, I'm going to get that horizontal scroll, okay? Minimum width has been found. And if I go bigger, so here it is pretty much about 1280, so I'm probably starting to hit my max resolution or my max width. If I go even wider than that, it's going to be hard for you to tell, so you might just have to trust me on this one. But if I go all the way out to 1680 resolution, I'm really just getting a much bigger space, white space on the left and the right, but my main content is fixed. So this might be a good combination or the best of both worlds, so to speak. Okay, so flexible with min and max width. Now you could be thinking, well, that's awesome. Why don't I just do that 100% of the time? And you could, but that doesn't mean that's the best way to go. So. Places like Zipcar, and a lot of new sites, by the way, use fixed websites too. So, find there's Zipcar, what about ABC News? ABC News looks like they're filling up the page at 1280, but you know there's, there's, there's blank space on the left and the right here. So if I size my browser to 1024, ABC News is also getting a little bit of a horizontal scroll there. Interesting. Let's see, what about the... MSNBC. At MSNBC 1024, wow, they're also getting just a slight horizontal scroll. Okay? Looks like this is a common little issue coming up here. And it could be a slight inaccuracy, I suppose, in my little browser resizer tool here. Because it's not much, just a little bit bigger, and you got it there. But, um, and we don't have to dig through their CSS too much. But um, yeah, and that's happening quite a bit. So once again, you'll decide for yourself, who do you want to cater to? Keep in mind the various browser resolutions out there. Just because you've got a nice computer at home, uh, and maybe you've got a 1680 wide resolution, or a 1920 resolution, doesn't mean that your customers visiting your site do. So make sure you check your site out in these other resolutions to see if you are getting any horizontal scrolling at which you consider to be a relatively common resolution. So that's enough of that with fixed versus flexible. And really the key to this is, is when you make the container that holds your entire visible web page, you decide, do you want it to be flexible? Do you want it to be fixed? Or do you want to be a combination of flexible with some lower and upper limitations to that flex. Okay, have fun.